April 21st, Friday, 2016. This is hopefully just a short video about some uh, post to beam considerations and uh, foundations, piers, piers and concrete considerations about things I'm seeing and things I probably should have done. Here's my two beams. Uh, they're stable and everything, but uh, as you can see, I poured some concrete around plastic tubs. Another one I had an old water container that I that I did, and they they're not cracked or anything. Even though the distance between the corner and the edge is small, that's bad. If I could do that again, I would have like used at least this size. This is bigger than this was a, probably a 13 and a half to 14 inch diameter, 14, 14 inch diameter, and that or more. The tubes that I saw for quick re quick form tubes were 12 inches. I didn't know there was any more bigger. I would preferably. Uh, like to use really big ones. Uh, I don't know 16 inch, you know fill them with concrete to make the distance from the corners To here even greater. Uh, I Just think there's more concrete around it would be better, but all in all it's bad to have a, a post in a con in concrete from what I'm reading and what I'm understanding Not a good thing to do and I did it a little more study and I maybe wouldn't have done it But anyway, I did it as opposed to these quick read Here this isn't cracked or nothing, but if this expands when water gets down in here and uh, absorbs into the concrete, water does absorb into concrete, it can expand and contract in weather and freezing conditions and crack, which it has happened already before I've even begun to put weight on my place here. Here's an example. Right here, here's a crack here. The crack extends from here to here. I don't know how deep it goes. And you can see the uh, path of least resistance possibly from there to there. I mean, it's only four inches. If I would have used the tube that maybe was about here. But all in all, if I didn't use no tube at all and did what most people do and probably the right way to make a pier and put the post on top of it using a steel uh, plate holder for it. And uh, so that's one thing I wish I would have thought about. Maybe, maybe I could have set uh, wooden posts in pea gravel. I've read about that. Where the water drains away from it into the soil. Anyways, I kind of think uh, what I see most people doing is you know just a solid pier concrete put the uh, steel on top of it and then add the post to that so the post never touches uh, the concrete moisture water different expansion and contraction ratios between wood and concrete stuff like that so that's one thing I should have thought about another thing is I happen to use one of my posts all my posts are four by four posts which are actually three and a half by three and a half and one of the posts I used is six four by six post and if I could do it again I would have used all four by six posts even if it's a small building I would have used four by six posts I like this four by six post when I grab it and shake it back and forth boy it doesn't even move I mean you can't hardly feel it flexing but when I grab another one uh, I can kind of feel it flex I can even kind of see it flex a little bit of course when the floor joists come across these two beams here it's going to be all one piece, so to say, as the floor joist, 16 inch on centers goes perpendicular to those beams. It'll all become one piece and everything will be really solid. And take this for example, this down here, this old pail, right? Maybe the expansion and contraction that I was talking about wouldn't ha cause the concrete to crack because, it, because of this plastic kind of holding it all in. Maybe I'm wrong, just a thought. Maybe it's better to use play that. W would it be cool if quick form tubes were made of plastic and maybe bigger than 12 inches maybe they are or like 14 16 inches uh, some other considerations are when the post which is three and a half inches and you do all you can this is a four by four post three and a half inches actually that's what they are supposed to be and then the beam that I have a half inch plywood in sandwich in between two two bys is actually three and a half inches also and uh, well, if they don't match, if those widths don't exactly match, you got a, a, a condition where they can move, where it can move even with the gussets in place until I get it bolted up with the carriage bolts, it, it helps out. So that's another condition that you need to watch out for and try to do all you can to get both of these widths the same. And also when you put your carriage bolts in, I believe that don't put them in low, put them in as close to the underside of the beam as you can, because if you put them down here, then this has a can go back and forth and stuff but if you put them really close it kind of locks it in place 
anyway, that's it. Those are just some considerations I thought of, of what I should have done, what I could have done, things I did wrong, possibly. But I'm going for what I did. This is what I did, and this is how the place will come together. So onward and upward, hopefully. Yes, that's what I believe. I, I, over and out.